Now, different topic, you gotta switch gears with your brain. Remember, we need to learn how to work both sides. So we just finished talking about the life cycle of a frog, now we're gonna talk about a fungus, okay? So pay attention. You see this bottom part right here where these two pictures are where it says how a fungus lives? All right, pay attention, it says, since fungi cannot produce their own food, they take carbohydrates, proteins, and other nutrients from living organisms or dead organic matter on which they live. So now, a fungus, it feeds off of living things and what? Dead. Dead. Dead things, right? So for example, let's say you left the hamburger Happy Meal out on this table for 20 years. Oh, 20 years? Oh. That's too long. Let's say you left it out here for like five days. What would happen to it? Mold. Mold. Now that mold, doesn't it represent a fungus? Yeah. Yes. Is it okay to eat a happy meal after five days? No. No, why? Because the fungus is um, dirty. So does that mean that the burger is alive? No. Yeah. So where does the fungi come from? Mold. Yeah. 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 Yes. Have you ever looked at why, doesn't your mom and dad, they say, listen, make sure if you have the soda, you put the cap on the top. Or if you have cold cuts, you make sure you seal it. Or if you have Tupperware, you close it because you don't want the air to get in, right? Tubbleware? So the air is what? A bad thing or a good thing? Bad. Bad thing if it comes down to keeping food, what? Fresh. Fresh. Okay? So what do fungi love? They love warm, moist environments. Yeah. So for example, if you left the hamburger out and Ken put the heat on, we left it for five days and we came back, there'd be this moldy, fuzzy looking thing on there. Can we do that? Can we do that project? Yes, we can do that project, and we'll make Ken try out the burger, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Not, not, okay. All right, and you just cut an apple into four slices, and you put all four slices out on the table. It would take less than, I'd say, ten minutes, and then what would happen to the apple? It would start to what? Turn yellow. Change colors, turn yellow, right? And why is it doing that? Because it's exposed to what? Oxygen. It's like slow rusting. Right, it's like slow rusting, but the inside of the apple has been exposed to air. Now, look at McDonald's packaging, right? Okay. This packaging, does it yes. prevent the apple from changing color? No. no. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, 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 Maybe no, yes, because it's sealed so tight. <gasps> yes, it's sealed so tight, but I also, when McDonald's decides to put apples inside this bag, what kind of apples do they choose? The best or the okay apples? The best. The yeah. best quality yeah. apples. Now, does the apple, though, even though it's in a sealed bag, does it have a shelf life? Yeah. What it means is, can this stay fresh forever? No. No, no right? After a certain amount of time, if they don't sell it, it's going to start to change. But the main culprit, or the thing that you want to prevent food from getting decomposing is what? You want to keep what away from it. You want to keep it refrigerated, but you want to keep air out of it. Now, with fungus, we just said the fungus loves moist environments. It loves air-rich environments. Huh? Do they salt this? No, they don't salt that. But <laughs> Why look, is it bitter then? Exactly. Yeah, man. So Why looking at what then? they say, shh, shh, pay one attention. It says, look, go over to it, it says the importance of fungi. Okay? It says, look, many fungi break down complex animal and plant matter into simple compounds. For example, have you ever seen your parents take away old fruit and vegetables and if they have a garden? They put it all together and they put it inside the soil? Oh, yeah, compost. Now compost, what's breaking down those uh, vegetables and fruits? Fungi. Fungi, right? And bacteria worms. And, and, and the bacteria and worms. But listen, uh, is there good fungi and there's bad fungi, fungi right? Yeah. Good fungi is like yeast and penicillin. Yeast and penicillin, exactly. Mushrooms? Mushrooms can be good fungi de depending on where you get them from. But what we're looking at is we're examining whether or not fungus are good for us. Now, I want to make a couple of points about fungus. Number one, they obtain their food by absorbing it from other living organisms, okay? Yeah. Now, they don't go shopping for food. They wait for something to die or they wait to jump onto something, okay? It's not like a vulture, but they're... Oh. So they're basically like, like plant... Like combination of plants and vultures? Yes, they definitely have some vulture characteristics. Vulture? They will start no, to what? To they will start to feed off dead animals or dead carcass, or they will start to feed off old fruit and vegetables if you give them the opportunity. It also says they obtain food by absorbing it from other living organisms or parts forming living things. Also, some of them you can see without a microscope, and some of them you need a microscope to see. Like for example, what do they always tell you about chicken? Chicken? What do you need to do after you handle chicken? You have to do what? Wash your hands. Wash your hands because on chicken there's what? 
Germs. Germs, right? Now, can you see the germs? No. Not with the naked eye. You would need a microscope to see them, right? Just like a cold. Can you see a cold? No. But if I touch this table and somebody had a cough and they put their hand down, and then I touch the table and touch my mouth, what can happen to me? You could spread the germs, right? So, some things we can see with the naked eye, some things we can't see. Does anybody have a telescope here? Yeah, they are there upstairs. Okay, yeah. Now, guess what? The iPhone is actually coming out with a new application at the telescope. You can actually magnify the germs that are on the table. It's really, really cool. I love it. I don't have the application yet, but we're going to have it soon. But, if you also look, it says... The main part of a fungus consists of thousands of thread-like things. So, for example, let's say this is a fungus. It's got tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of different thread-like substances. In between those substances, you've got something called what? Germs. Not the germs. It's something called hypate. H-Y-H-A-E. Now, that's what's responsible for what? I what? Hypate. 